Good morning, everyone. Good morning, live viewers. Good morning, new viewers on Facebook. Um, we're here on F Facebook Live. The Petscope TV has moved to Facebook Live starting yesterday. Um, good morning, replay viewers, wherever you're watching, whether it's here on Facebook, on Twitter, on uh, the Wag of the Tail archive. Um, hello, Monique. Good to see you. For those of you who, um, in case you're tuning in, um, since it's a little different than Periscope, we can't necessarily see who has, oh, I guess we can see who's joined, but it's nice if everyone can just, you know, when people come in, um, sign in, post a comment, let's just um, see uh, who's here. So we have, hey, Monique, hi, all right, I'm seeing the, I'm kind of, all right, this is good, this is so much nicer to be able to read the, these comments like this. So, um... So welcome to uh, another episode. This is episode five today of Wag of the Tail um, this, on the Petscope TV. Petscope TV is Periscope's first network all about pets. Um, you can so glad you can view and comment today. Yes, why? Uh, I guess you were having an issue before. I don't know. Anyhow, um, anyhow, you can get the complete uh, schedule of Petscope TV shows at thepetscopetv.com. Uh, and, uh, you can just subscribe to the Google calendar. You can see when everyone's on, we have another show coming up in a couple hours today. Melissa from Tort Rescue is going to be talking about lizards and tortoises and things that have scales and shells. Um, Wag of the Tail is uh, my weekly free-range variety magazine show about animals and the difference that people and animals make in each other's lives. Um, that's My name is Randy Lyman. I'm the pet uncle. I'm the host of the show, and I'm glad to have you with me for uh, another episode. Um, if you've seen Wag of the Tail before, then you know that I start off each episode with just a little news segment um, before launching into the show's topic. And... Uh, this is a segment of the show I've been wanting to do a little more with. It's been kind of fun. So far, all the news has been kind of funny news about cats going on unexpected trips by car, by plane, by uh, British postal mail. There was a cat that actually uh, mailed itself in a box in England uh, not all that long ago. All of them have been um, sort of happily reunited with their owners. But uh, today, I'm going to just uh, devote the whole episode to um, just some animal news and uh, just start spreading this section of the show out a little bit more. Um, so we're going to just be looking at news. It's going to be some some of it's funny, some of it's serious, some of it's uplifting, some of it's inspirational. Um, I've been a uh, journalist and reporter for more than 25 years, and so I'm just sort of bringing that sort of sensibility here to wag of the tail, where we look at the animal news in, in very much a spirit of, um, of, of sort of serious but playful um, uh, inquisitiveness and inquiry, wanting to just sort of find things out. And so I'm going to, when I discover things, I'm going to uh, bring them here and, and, and share with you. So everyone, please feel free to comment, feel free, so I can just see who's here. If you haven't um, liked, I think you show up if you like the page first. Hi, Donna, good to see you. I think if you like the Petscope TV page, then your name will show up when you first join. I'm seeing some people join, but please just introduce yourselves. Let's let, um, let us, everyone know who's here so you can, because so much a part of these shows is the way that the viewers all interact with each other, not just with me uh, and answering the questions. Um, you can share on Facebook to your own groups, to your own uh, pages and so on. So um, please just feel, feel free to do that. I much appreciate it. I miss the hearts, got to say, miss the hearts here. Um, that was uh, always sort of a nice feature of, of Periscope, but I'm sure Facebook Live will uh, come up with some other new ways of, of interacting. Um, but it is easier to read your comments here, I must say. That is much easier. So uh, today we're going to look at some news of the wild. First, let me just start off by saying just a little bit of um, personal news. Yesterday I took part, you all remember Jupiter, the, rap, the rescue rabbit that I made a video of some time ago. Yesterday, uh, rabbitrescue.com held a, a rabbit adoption event at one of the Petco stores here in San Francisco for two hours. We had uh, several, four rabbits out on display. We talked, you know, a lot of people stopped by. Um, I like how the comments don't cover my face too, although it doesn't matter as much whether I see me, I suppose. But hello, Therese, thank you for joining. I'm just getting started on the introduction and talking about uh, yesterday's rabbit adoption event that um, you know I've been volunteering with um, rabbitrescue.com uh, 
to uh, help them get some rabbits adopted. And uh, this is Jupiter. I made a little adoption video of Jupiter a couple months ago. Jupiter was there, still hasn't found a home yet, but he was um, uh, he was there and, and quite adorable, and just as, as always. And we had a little lesson on how to um, trim a rabbit's nails. I know uh, Dr. Julie Busby did that on her Petscope TV show yesterday, trimming how to trim a dog's nails. Well, I learned how to trim a rabbit's nails, and it's not all that, it's kind of similar to a dog's nails, but you can watch the video of it on, on Facebook. Um, my partner, Diana, um, uh, shot some video. You can see it on our Facebook page at Style Pets Boutique, which I'll show you the URL for that in a little while. But just wanted to let you know, we had a great rabbit adoption event yesterday here in San Francisco. Um, speaking of small, other small mammals, but not just yet. Um, you may know, I'm sure you do, that uh, California, we here on the West Coast have been experiencing a drought for the, a drought for the last four years. And uh, the El Nino rains that we've had recently helped a lot, uh, but they haven't solved the problem yet. As you can see here, we've got some, this is a, a picture of a, of a river and a, and a reservoir in California in 2014. And this is just a couple of um, weeks ago, I guess, not, not very recently. You can see how much rain we've had um, and uh, here's another one. You can see Lake Oroville up here in Northern California. Um, up at the top, this at the top was six months ago, and down below you can see how much water has filled in. So the El Nino rains have really helped a lot. Uh, they haven't solved the problem, but now some environmental scientists, well, I should say our state legislature and other politicians, you know, now that things have kind of eased up a little bit and the immediate crisis is over, we're looking at new ways to conserve water and to maybe build some more dams, maybe do some other, you know, take some other measures. Um, too bad Texas can't send some rain your way. You know, that would be great. I think that the solution to all of our nation's water problems is the construction of a national aqueduct system like they had in the Roman Empire, where we could take all the snow and rain that comes down in other parts of the country and just send it out west. And Come on, it would be jobs created in like every state of the union. The politicians would be happy. The construction unions would be happy. Everybody and water would get distributed fairly in this country. That's what I think we need. To, we need it. We don't need, a, you know, so many other things. We don't need more freeways. What, we don't need nuclear power plants. What we need is a national aqueduct system. But as the state legislators are talking about building dams, environmental scientists are looking at another kind of dam building to uh, ease the state's water uh, problems. They are looking to beavers. It turns out, as it happens, that um, beavers are nature's hydrologists and they don't just build dams and things to live in. They're, they're, they actually engineer the way that water travels through a landscape. They, um, you know, when they build the dams and they, they stock these up, that helps rainwater sort of stay in the landscape. You know, so much of, of our, um, maybe we was all flooding that way. Well, yes, actually it would because when water is stored in a watershed, it has a chance to seep into the ground. Whereas so much of our aqueduct system in this country and especially like in this, in, you know, California is geared towards keeping water out of the landscape for agriculture and sending it to the sea. And dams do the opposite thing. And what happens is when you get rid of all that water that way, then the ground dries out. And so when you do have rain, it doesn't absorb as well and more of it floods out. So yes, da beaver dams actually would help with the flooding situation. They would help keep water uh, in the landscape. They would keep the ground wetter, the grass greener, more wildlife would exist there. It would just be, um, you know, instead of the water just from the, the rain and snow just rushing down to the sea, it would stay in the landscape. And so a lot of um, scientists are trying to, have, there has a, actually a campaign to bring back the beaver into California. North America used to be just overrun with beavers, small ones and apparently some really super large seven foot long beavers, which I'm glad, I don't know about you, I both would and would not want to run into a seven foot long beaver. But these large beavers, they're trying to reintroduce them. It's a con it's, there are some model programs in Oregon and some other states, I think even Texas, um, to do this. But um, in California, it's the benefits. There's not everyone is sold on it. Um, it's not clear where the beavers were introduced. It's not clear what kind of effects they would have and, and very other 
a lot of other things. But why not? Beavers were building dams and preserving watersheds and landscapes long before we got here, and so now some scientists are are uh, are, are bringing the eye back. And you know, part of wag of the tail, part of this show is you know informed by my sensibility as a as a journalist and the publications that I've worked for that have combined sort of a, a, what I can only really describe as a Midwestern practicality meeting a left coast idealism. In other words, I've worked for papers where it was like how to fight City Hall and, and where to get the best burger when you're done. Ah, thank you, hi Suzanne, thank you for joining. Hi Diana, thank you for joining, nice to see you all. Um, and so, and if this is not the epitome of Midwestern practicality and left coast idealism in action, then, then I don't know what is. Get the beavers to build your dams for you. So maybe we'll be seeing that here in California. Who knows? It certainly, it, anything, anything that will help our drought situation, I think is going to be a, a good thing. So, um, in a related sort of another California story, you may have heard that last year um, we had some two very big devastating wildfires here in California that destroyed a lot of homes and displaced um, a lot of animals. And because these were mostly in rural areas like Lake County and Calaveras County up in the Sierra foothills, it was large animals and farm animals that were largely affected um, by this. Those are agricultural communities. They rely on cows and horses and goats and sheep uh, for their livelihood and for their economy. But we do have a good news story that came out of this. Six months after the fire, a woman's cat came home. This little, uh, or little cat in, in uh, Lake County, which is just up north of here, wandered for six months after the fire. And one day, this woman, um, she was driving up to her home up in Lake County, and she saw a cat that looked like hers um, just near the home. And she called out to it, and it came up to her. And so we have a good news story here this morning that this cat found its way home six months after being displaced by a wildfire that destroyed his whole area. So mom and cat are happily back together with cat seems to be, um, uh, looks just fine. It was, you know, a little, little worn out, but apparently none the worse for wear. So it is back home now. And along with a cat story, you know, last, I think in the first episode of wag of the tail, um, yes, it is nice to have a happy ending to that story. Uh, you know, this cat wandered the woods uh, for six months and finally found, found its way home. In episode one of Wagger the Tail, I reported on uh, Oakland's Cat Town Cafe, which was the very first cat cafe in the country and has now, um, there's cat cafes now all over the country, all over England, all over Australia, in short, all over the English speaking world. Um, we have uh, cat cafes. <clears throat> well, as the saying goes, every dog has his day, and today we ha uh, there is now the nation's first dog cafe, just recently opened in, of all places, Los Angeles. It's very similar, that you can go in, they don't serve food there, but you can get coffee and tea and, and lemonade. It is for uh, uh, rescue dogs, that you can go in, the dogs hang out there, you can go in, you can sit with the dogs, um, you can just look at and you can adopt them as well. So joining the, the, the growing phenomenon of cat cafes in this country and elsewhere, we now have America's first dog cafe in Los Angeles. And that's what it's called, the dog cafe. Let me point out that there are links to the dog cafe and to all the stories that I'm referring to in today's episode. Um, you can find those in... Um, my show notes that are on my blog, the Pet Uncle blog, if you go to wagofthetail.live, wagofthetail.live, you can get a whole replay of all my shows, and you will, uh, and then the show notes will include uh, links to all the stories I'm referring to, including a link to the Dog Cafe. So yes, Dog Cafe, and uh, Sarah is, I guess, not on here, but she's moving to L.A. soon, so she can go check it out for us and, and, and tell us how it is. Wag of the Tail. Oh, Wag of the T-A-L-E. Um, I'll show the URL, actually, a little later. I should have it in the middle of the show here, but I don't. Um, but it's uh, Wag of the Tail, Wag of the T-A-L-E dot live. So thank you for putting that up there so people can see. Um, oh, Sarah is apparently trying to send me Facebook messages. Uh, what's next? Oh, in other news, on April 10th, 
The ASPCA turned 150 years old on April 10th. It's been around with us for that long. And so as part of that, they are launching, they have launched 150, ah, hi Sarah, good to see you. I was just, wait, let me back up for just a second because you're moving to LA. Um, the f country's first dog cafe has just opened in Los Angeles. So we're expecting you to go check it out and let, let us know how it is. Um, I've reported in Wagger the Tail about uh, the growing phenomenon of cat cafes. There's now a dog cafe where you can go have some coffee and tea and they have uh, rescue dogs there for adoption. So the link to it is on uh, my in the show notes uh, for today's show at wagofthetail.live. So hope you all check it out. ASPCA turned 150 years old on April 10th, and in honor of that, they uh, are uh, have started a 150 days of rescue campaign. And what they are doing is not only are they trying to raise $150,000 in 150 days, but trying to inspire people. They're trying to sort of reach 150,000 actions for animals in 150 days and all you need to do is between now and September 17th donate 15 minutes of your time could be to a shelter could be an event could be you know any walking dogs it could be all kinds of things um, and um, and then you can go to their page which is at ASPCA.org forward slash 150 days 150 days and then you just log in what you did um, and, and tell them. And they seem to be, after only a week, they seem to be up to um, at least, it's not exactly numbered, but on the little thermometer scale, it seems like they've got between one and 2,000 actions already uh, in just the first week. So between now and September 7th, next time you do something that you know to volunteer or take some sort of action for animals, go to ASPCA.org forward slash 150-DAYS. And you can um, uh, just log in your action and, and help them count towards the um, 150 days. And if you go to that page, you can also watch their celebrity studded video with um, people like Jason Schwartzman, um, Adrian Moore, who played Cindy in Orange is the New Black, um, Edie Falco from The Sopranos and Nurse Jackie is in the video, um, and uh, rapper Curtis 50 Cent Jackson, and... Um, Martha Stewart is in the video and, and a whole lot of other people. So check out the SPCA um, and help them celebrate their 150 years anniversary um, over between now and September 7th. Sticking with the letter A, Apple's App Store has um, Apps for Earth is being featured on, if you go to iTunes right now, they have a variety of apps that are related to the, the environment, to wildlife, to the oceans, to, to all sorts of things. And uh, they have one, here's, they have one for um, safeguarding wildlife. And so the apps they have are kind of like, seem to be mostly like games or your fun apps or, you know, things like that. And sure, why not? Um, but they have partnered with the World Wildlife Fund. If you get the World Wildlife Fund's app, it's a free download, nothing to nothing to buy. But once you're in the app for a dollar ninety nine, if you buy their tour of planet Earth, and um, I did this, and I've only started going through it just last night, and it looks really great. For a dollar ninety nine through April twenty fourth, which is just this this weekend, I think it's Sunday, that if you buy the in app um, uh, planet Earth tour. Uh, then 100% of the proceeds, all that dollar ninety nine, is going to go to support the World Wildlife Fund. So if you're on, if you have a, an iPhone or iPad, please go to the App Store, uh, get the World Wildlife Fund app for free, and check out the uh, Planet Earth tour. It's actually really kind of neat. There's there's a thing where you can uh, sort of a live 360 view where you hold the app and you see the Earth, and then as you um, World Wildlife Fund supports hunters. Oh, okay, I guess I didn't know about that. But, you, well, make your own decision about whether to buy the app. But anyhow, you can still, the money is still going there. So they do a lot of other good things as well, too. So anyhow, that's something that one needs to actually, something you always need to do is just sort of research causes on your own. A lot of these organizations, you're, even the ASPCA, they're controversial. A lot of people don't like the stands that they take. Um, so, you know, 
it's there's never any blanket thing. I mean, you know, like Apple as well. Like I'm an Apple fan. I love Apple, but you know what? Apple underpays its workers in China too, and does all kinds of abuses. And so it's the kind of thing you gotta. I mean, I would encourage more than just spending money to just give, give, give. I would encourage people to really research the causes that they're going to give to and see what's going on. There are going to be things that you don't like about the World Wildlife Fund or ASPCA or or Apple for that matter or Microsoft for that matter or or any of these organizations. And you need to just sort of balance out, you know, the kind of things that you like, um, you know, whether you think it's worth supporting the organization and can live with the other things they do. Also, you know, the responsible thing to do also, I think, is to, you know, help these organizations change and to be, you know, help Apple, um, you know, improve its labor practices, improve, you know, the way that it, you know, the, the, the safety within its factories and the same with all these companies and all these organizations. So on um, another note, we have another technology story. This time it is biotechnology. Um Many, maybe you saw Jurassic Park where scientists created not only a dinosaur theme park, but entire dinosaurs from um, from genetic material that they got from the blood of sucked up by mosquitoes from dinosaurs. And they created a whole dinosaur theme park. And of course, recently we learned about the, um, the discovery of some Ice Age frozen puppies in the... Um, found in Siberia that are were preserved pretty much intact are going to provide us with a lot of valuable uh, genetic information about um, dogs. Oh, mm, all right. Well, you know what? I'm one of those people I didn't really, really know that. A front for hunters that kill wild animals for trophies. Okay, well, that is not a good thing. I will certainly agree with you that that is not a good thing. And I think that... Um, uh, it does bear some more research. So thank you for pointing that out, Sarah. Um, I'll perhaps stand corrected on that. But in any case, um, well, yes, please research it yourself. Decide if it's, it's the kind of thing that you want to do. So I'll stand a, a little bit corrected on that. But um, at least, you know, there's, it's never whether you're doing something for an organization or not. It's never a bad time or wrong time to do something for animals. But these, uh, anyhow, getting back to this topic, the um, scientists are now attempting to bring back another extinct species, um, that a species that you can see here in these prehistoric cave paintings. Um, uh, the uh, an animal called the oryx. You can see the resemblance here over on the left, a, kind of a bull with the horns. And this is an oryx. This is an extinct species of large wild cattle that, that once inhabited all over Europe, Asia, North Africa. Um, it weighed as much as 3,300 pounds. That's how much your car weighs. Your car weighs 3,300 pounds, more or less. And uh, the horns were two weak, uh, as long as two feet long. Um, Scientists are trying to bring back a version of the animal based on the ge genetic code that they have found in 6,700 year old remains of animals that they have found, but they're not trying to use do laboratory genetic research. They're trying to sort of cross, yes, it does look like a bull. It's a large form of, of cattle that um, used to just be predominant and died out in the early 1600s, so almost 400 years ago. What they are doing is instead of doing the genetic manipulation, they are trying to backbreed and just sort of use modern cattle and do genetic, you know, do crossbreeding and try to recreate the oryx based on the genetic code they have from these fossils. So we will see how well that does. That's certainly not going to be happening anytime soon, uh, but they are working on it. Why they want to bring back the oryx, the article did not specifically say. So, um, but who knows? Um, we It may soon be uh, roaming uh, Europe and Africa <clears throat> and Asia all over again. And uh, speaking of evolution, um, it turns out Mother Nature, Mother Nature Network uh, reports that moths are evolving, are evolving to deal with the light pollution in cities. This is a, um, the generations of m moths living in big cities and, and dying at porch lights have in fact made an evolutionary difference. It turns out that urban moths are actually less likely to fly toward lights these days. They seem to have been learning something 
uh, from uh, from all of their ancestors um, getting scorched to death on light bulbs. Um, they are, however, the fact that they're flying less, though, uh, that has some effects down the food chain. It means that, that birds and bats and other things that eat moths are finding less food. So um, who knows how that population is going to uh, happen. But just goes to show you, you live in a city long enough, it, it changes you, even if you're a moth. Unfortunately, they will not be able to enjoy that evolutionary advantage that much longer because as it turns out, and this was just reported a couple days ago, also in Mother Nature News, it turns out that the universe is going to end sooner than we previously thought it was going to. The Mother Nature Network says this isn't good news, <clears throat> but you know, the universe is going to last a long time, but now it's dying faster than we thought. So how much longer is the universe going to last, you wonder? Well, they think one nonillion years. How long is a nonillion years? <clears throat> and this is because, you know, the universe is just cooling down. Everything, the stars are going to burn out. Everything's just going to die a long, slow heat death. Well, that is scheduled to take a nonillion years is a billion times a billion times a trillion years. But now, according to this new research, it seems like the universe is only going to last a million times a billion times a trillion years. So time is running out. So all I'm saying is just pet your dog or cat while you still have time. Because the real issue that we need to face today is not global warming, but universal cooling. Everything is just going to come to an end in this many years. Yes, it's a long time, but why wait till the last minute? Make your preparations now. So that is uh, it for today's show of Wag of the Tail. Um, I'm Randy Lyman. I'm the pet uncle. You've been watching News of the Wild. You can, yes, one nonillion years. You heard it here first. I had to look that number up, but um, there are ways that you can find that out, but uh, what all these big numbers are. So yes, don't, don't wait until the end. Just do something good today. Help an animal today because time is running out. You only have a non-million non years left. So thanks for watching. Uh, I am the Pet Uncle. This is where you can follow me on Twitter and on Periscope. You can um, read my blog at thepetuncle.com and uh, send me some tips and comments and everything else on email at randy at thepetuncle.com. You can... Um, Watch replays of the show. We can get my show notes at wagofthetail.live. There's that URL I mentioned before. I'm also on Medium uh, forward slash at the pet uncle. And you can visit my uh, Facebook page that I uh, share with my partner, Diana. I get a nonillion hearts. Oh, thank you very much. Um, on Facebook at Style Pets Boutique, that's where my partner, Diana, and I have um, just some. We have videos, we have uh, photos, we have things when we uh, link to our, our shop that goes to the Pet Uncle blog. So thank you for watching. I will see you uh, again next week at 8 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Central here on Facebook, The Pet Scope, forward slash The Pet Scope. This is Randy Lyman, The Pet Uncle. Thanks very much and have a good rest of your day and good rest of your week.